Welcome to One Heart Church. It's my honor to share God's Word on a weekly basis with all those who join in by way of this recording, as well as those who experience our live worship service every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. It's my honor and joy to welcome you into our second part of our series on what it means to experience the impossible, awakening our hearts to true faith, grasping and, and learning how to connect the dots that God has put before us. Because sometimes life does throw things at us that challenge us and cause us to process life uh, looking at at it in terms that seem possible, that seem like we can't get past it. And all those terms drive us towards experiencing something that only God can do for us. And that is, he is the one who meets us at the point of our impossible moments and becomes the answer to the issues of life. Today, we have a chance to be able to dive into that. And we, during this entire series, we'll be looking at what it means to ask the right questions, to see the right scripture promises, and to gain an insight. And so my prayer is that every single week you'll glean at least one key insight uh, that I'll share with you, but also some other things as we look at this text. Because today we're in Mark chapter 2, and, uh, and the title of the message, as I mentioned to you a moment ago, is Connecting the Dots. And what you see is from a paralytic who cannot help himself to a Pharisee who cannot understand himself, these are the things that allow us to be able to grasp and understand how to connect the dots. So in between all of that, we find the calling of Matthew, the, the tax collector, or Levi, uh, as noted as well in this text. And also we have the privilege of being able to see what happens when John's disciples and the Pharisees both get together in their fasting ritual and miss the essence of the message of what Christ can do uh, in the midst of our lives. And today, as you think about that, it could very well be that you're processing life based on some terms of how you see things, what you're processing through, what you're evaluating, what you're hearing from him, what insights you're gleaning. And as a result of that, you find yourself flustered by the fact that there's not all answers and sometimes it's only question. That's exactly what the paralytic had to be feeling as he lived his life paralyzed, not being able to accomplish what he dreamed of being able to do. But then in a sudden moment, he hears there's someone coming his way who can change everything, who can take his impossible and make it possible, who can take him and that pallet and say, get up and walk, and he can walk. You see, today, as you think about that, it may be you're paralyzed, maybe not by some physical calamity, but by some emotional or financial or spiritual issue that you're contending with. And all of a sudden, Jesus wants to take, take away all that paralysis and free you up to experiencing the best that God has for your life. Today could be an amazing day for you as you, you join in with us on this study. And I begin by asking you a question. It's a key question uh, as you think about your own journey of faith. How do you build your faith to anticipate the impossible? What are the things you do that allows your faith to become so powerful that you're willing to believe? Think about it for a second. Here's a paralytic who has four very distinctive friends who are so committed to him that nothing will keep them from being able to take their friend right in front of Jesus. Nothing. And when you find a room too crowded and life overwhelming, what do you do? You take off the roof and you drop them down from the roof. What a great story for us to begin our study today. Because truth is, when you start learning how to build your faith, something begins to happen inside of you. You notice the key verse today are the words that Jesus spoke to the paralytic. Look, if you would, in Mark chapter 2 and verse 5, notice what it says. And Jesus, say, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. No more powerful words do we ever hear in our hearts than your sins are forgiven. When Jesus comes into our hearts, he forgives us of everything, all things move on out of our lives and we begin to focus in on what Christ can do in our life. What a key verse today to understand the power of forgiveness, to realize that the impossible is answered in our salvation because without Christ, we could never be redeemed. Without Christ, we could never experience eternity forever with him. That is a miracle of the impossible becoming possible. Exactly what Jesus said. With man, it is impossible. With God, all things are possible. So today, as we dive into this, let's look at this text. Let's just look at some verses and kind of see what the scripture said. And we'll, we'll begin at the conclusion, including part of the first part of the story. Verse 9, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet 
and walk. Contrasting that with all those religious people who are, who are pondering this, because obviously you'll see in a moment, they, they, there's this, they, they hear this and they're wondering, they start reasoning in their heart, what in the world is Jesus saying? And it's interesting because Jesus was the answer to the impossible and, and he was the absolute opposite of all that was going on in religion because what Jesus did, he came to counteract all the formulas and give them one formula, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's exactly what he came to do for us. Look on if you would, verse 16 or 15. And it happened that he was reclining at the table in his house and many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples for there were many of them and they were following him. So here you find the story of what happened when one man, the most unlikely, not impossible, but the most unlikely, comes into a relationship with Christ and Jesus says to him, follow me. And out of that, he doesn't just follow Jesus. He invites everybody he knows, everyone. says, you know, you guys got to come follow and hear what this man said. It's different than anything else we've ever heard. Look on if you would. And verse 18, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And they came and said to him, why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And so they obviously don't understand that what Jesus is doing and with his disciples is life transforming. It's not connected to some formula of religion. It's instead centered in God's revealed purpose being demonstrated in front of everyone. And that is that Christ is coming in and change lives and transform lives. For the disciples, they found that some of these rituals would give them more fulfillment than the experience of seeing God at work in their heart and life on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, when Christ comes to work in our lives, he takes the impossible and makes it possible. Look on if you would. One other verse, verse 24 of this chapter. The Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And so obviously they start contending with him because everything that Jesus is doing is in direct uh, contradiction to everything they have learned because they've learned you do this, 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 and you follow all these rules. And when you follow them all perfectly, then you are at a place where God can say, well done. But well, the truth is, Jesus discounts all that, sets it aside, puts in motion what true faith does, and that true faith begins to seal inside of their hearts and life. And what you'll see today is this. You start connecting the dots together in the Gospel of Mark, and what you're going to see is there's miracle after miracle, there's moment after moment, there's, there's insight after insight. All these things all come together. There's Jesus confronting religion. There's Jesus becoming the answer to religion. This Jesus transforming any heart that moves away from religion and comes into a right relationship. Today, we get to see that as we watch these dots connect together and move our hearts forward. So what is the insight of this text that will be most helpful to you? What is the key insight? And it's simply this. If we wait, listen, and if we believe intently, intently, what will happen? He will meet us at the point of our impossible need. You see, think about it for a second. The paralytic was waiting, listening, intently anticipating that Jesus would come by. Finds out he's back home in Capernaum, as verse 1 says, and back home there, he begins to realize, you know what? This is my moment. This is the hour. This is the moment. And listen carefully. If you are facing something that you don't have the answer to, let this be your moment. Let this be the moment where you say, Lord, I trust you. I surrender to you. I commit my heart to you. I want to see you at work in my heart and life. Let this be that hour that changes everything. Let this be that moment where you are very intentional in every aspect of your pursuit. You let your faith grow. You let your heart move towards him. You begin to yield to him. And what happens? Everything about who you are is transformed by your encounter with the Lord. But remember, you have to be intent. You have to be careful to look and wait and listen. And as you wait and listen, you begin to believe and God begins to work. What a great, great reminder to all of us about what he can do. So let's look at this story. Let's connect four dots together and see if we don't understand how important it is that we believe him for the impossible and that we awaken our faith to a living and vibrant dynamic encounter that, that lasts day by day, moment by moment in our experience with Jesus. So let's look at it. First of all, the paralytic. It's a story of the impossible physical need that's a part of this guy's story. 
There's no, there's no answer to it. The only answer is that God would do something miraculous. And you may not have the answer yourself, but the answer never rested in you. The answer always rested in him. He is the one who can take what's crooked and make it straight. He is the one who can take what's broken and heal it. He is the one who can speak into an issue in a way that we never dreamed possible. So when you look at it, notice if you would, in verse 1, I was mentioned to you, when he come back to Capernaum several days afterwards, he, it was heard that he was at home. And many gathered together, and there was no room, not even, not, not even near the door, and he was speaking a word to them. And they came bringing to him a, a paralytic carried by four men. Being unable to get him under, uh, get him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had dug out an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying. And Jesus, seeing their face, said to him, and said to the paralytic, your son, your sins are forgiven. Can you imagine? I mean, let's picture it for a moment. Could it be that as Jesus begins to see stuff falling out of the ceiling, he realized something unique is happening? And as he's teaching, all of a sudden, laying right in front of him is a paralytic. And Jesus says to him, because of their faith, because of their faith, you're forgiven. Can you imagine? And by the way, that wasn't the end of the story because you remember he goes on and, he, and they, they begin to ask him, you know, in verse 8, why are you reasoning among these things in your hearts? Jesus asked him that. Because what? It, is it easier to see that, say that paralytic, your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk? But so that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, watch it, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet and go home. And he did. What do we learn here? We learn this. We find those who will believe beyond the obvious to accomplish the impossible. You see, what was obvious was this man would never be able. This man would never be able to walk. This man would never be able to function. And it was obvious he was paralyzed. But what does God do? He has... He gets to watch four friends who obviously care enough for the paralytic. And we don't know anything about those four men, but here's what we do know. We know one man went home walking, praising God, rejoicing in God's provision for his life. First thing we see is this, when you connect this dot, is the impossible becomes possible when, when the paralytic has friends who drop him down from the roof. The second story you hear is that of Matthew and obviously or Levi. Here's the story. Here's the story of him of a miraculous conversion because here's a man who, who's, uh, his occupation obviously doesn't allow him to be, you know, very, uh, very well viewed in, in society at that time. You'll notice in verse 14, and he passed by and he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax booth and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. Watch this. He walked away from the money. He walked away from all the incentives that were a part of the career he had built and his career and instead shifted to one thing, following Jesus. What you realize very quickly is this. Jesus sees in us the potential to accomplish what others deem impossible. No one, no one got up this morning and said, I think Matthew would be a great apostle. I think Matthew would be a great a great leader. I think Matthew, I think Matthew will give it all up so they can experience what it is that God has in store for him. The truth of the matter is, Matthew was used by God because his heart turned towards God. Then you'll notice this, the, third, the third dot. So first of all, you have the paralytic, then you have Matthew or the tax collector. Then you have John's disciples. And obviously, uh, when you look at John's disciples, you see the story of religion without understanding. In other words, they're doing these things like uh, they are, they're taking part in fasting and and. And praying, and obviously that those are not bad in any way. They they obviously are part of our faith journey. But what happens is they wanted them to take precedent over Jesus' purpose. They wanted to they wanted to let that rule over what it was Jesus was trying to accomplish. And when you read it, you begin to realize something. Uh, in verse eighteen, they they were together, and and he, he asked the question, why why are these two groups fasting? Jesus said, while the bridegroom is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast, can they? So long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. No one sews a, a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, otherwise the patch pulls away from it. The, word, new, the new from the old, and a worse tear results. 
No one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost in the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wine skin. What is Jesus trying to teach them? He's trying to teach them that his timing is perfect and his principles supersede religion. What they didn't realize was that they were standing right in front of the Son of God. They were standing right in front of the Son of Man. They were, stand, they were standing in front of the impossible answer to their issues. And yet what they do, they begin to ask questions and try to deflect away from the supernatural things that Jesus intended to do. One final dot that you see here. So think about it for a second. There's a paralytic. There's Matthew. There's John's disciples that are there gathered with the Pharisees. And then you find the Pharisees. And it's a story of the Sabbath purpose what it is that God has in store for the Sabbath that is much more miraculous than just practicing religion. It's transformational. So look, if you would, in verse 23, and it happened that while he was passing through the grain fields on the Sabbath, that his disciples began to make their way along while picking the heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you not read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions became hungry? Now he entered the house of God in the time of Abathur the high priest and ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for anyone to eat except a priest. And he also gave to those who were with him. Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of Sabbath. Even of the Sabbath. That is who Jesus is. So what happens here? Jesus begins to show them how, and how to negate the opposition and affirm the lesson to be learned. He quickly shuts them down and he connects the dot together to help them realize something. Religion is not gonna get you where God intends for you to go. The impossible that God intends for you to experience is you coming to the place where you're willing to ask yourself, are you able to connect the dots of true faith? If you are, then you're on the impossible journey of experiencing an amazing God as you awaken your faith and these amazing moments we have studying God's word. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your amazing way in which you work in our hearts and lives. Thank you for every person who's watching this recording. I pray it's a blessing to them. I pray, Lord, that you would help them to grasp and understand that what you have begun, you're going to complete. You're an amazing, faithful God who speaks to our hearts, who orders our steps, who guides us towards the answer we're looking for. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the grace that comes into our hearts to encounter you. Lord, we thank you for our faith that is absolutely vibrant and vibrantly connected between the dots of what you do inside of us and how you teach us and how you lead us. We begin to learn how to live out and have a true faith. Lord, awaken that in all of our hearts. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me. This is the second message in this series. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. My prayer is you'll connect the dots this week. Have a great week studying and learning and growing in the Lord. Be sure to be in his word. Be sure to yield to his spirit and be sure to pray, seeking his face. God bless you. Have a great week.